Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Richness of Gratitude. Today, I have my very dear friend, Gail Olofsson, that's going to be joining us. Um, Gail is an absolute superstar. She's been in corporate for over three decades. She is a professor. She has been instrumental in sponsorships, and um, she's a keynote speaker. I, I just can go on. We, we only have 30 minutes, so I'm just going to um, turn it over to Gail Olofsson, who's going to share with us today. She's going to talk a little bit about the richness of gratitude. And I know that when I start my day, sometimes um, I'll feel a little overwhelmed and I'll think about everything that I have going on. And the minute I switch my mindset to, what am I grateful for? Look at this. It's a beautiful day, and I'm lucky that I have these um, busy schedules or that I have these things going on or that, you know, ju just that I, I'm able to get out of bed and feel, feel okay, not be in pain. All these little things. But um, with that being said, I want to turn it over to my very dear friend, Gail Lawson. Well, hello. And because you're in Westbrook, Connecticut, I want to add in Gail Lowney Lawson because my family is from the Norwich area. That's so, right. I've got to give a plug to my family, my sisters who live in Waterford and Niantic. I love Westbrook, love that whole area. And it's so, it's so good to, to, see, to see you and be here. Well, it's so wonderful to have you. And I think that the topic is just so fitting. Um, I have to say, every time I'm around you, you always make me want to be a better person. I am grateful for our friendship. I'm grateful to know you. I'm grateful to be part of your energy and your excitement. So. You know, and I guess we've never really talked about gratitude, so I'm really excited. Like, tell me a little bit about um, gratitude and why is it so important? Well, gratitude, how I define gratitude is it really is the amplified acknowledgement of the positive aspects in life. Like, you just started by saying you wake up and feel overwhelmed. Never again. Right. You're going to wake up and you're going to lie there for a minute. And then just think, before you even get out of bed, are your hands working? Can you see? It's not trite. This is real. Like you wake up and you, you're alive. One of my girlfriends who's 96 now says when she wakes up and knows her name, she knows it's going to be a great day. And it's just your whole mindset for the whole day. We have running water. We're here again today. So how, how does one cultivate, though, you know, um, a gratitude practice? What would you recommend to get started? Well, I, I started back in 2016. I wrote an article called Get To Versus Have To. And I was walking with a client who was turning 50. And I said, how do you feel about turning 50? And she stopped and said, I get to turn 50. I get to turn 50. And this changed my whole mindset of what we get to do. I get to go to Sam's baseball games, left-handed pitcher, and watch his games. I get to go to my sister's, I remember my sister's triplets play, The Hobbit, at St. Bernard's High School, and watch it Friday night, Saturday. I get to go visit my aging mother-in-law. I get to go to work. I kiss this desk. I'm so grateful. Do you know how many people would love to go to work and love to love what they're doing? So that mindset, if you can wake up with, I get to wake up today, I get to go to work, I get to be around great people, I get to learn from the negative people and situations of my life. So that's the mindset. But to go one step further, I recommend journaling if it's for you. I was just talking with a work friend of mine today and he said, I've started to journal and meditate and I looked it up and I said, I journal. And he said, I know you do. I think you mentioned it to me about a month ago, and I just started. And then when you wake up, it's about putting happy thoughts in your head. Again, what are you grateful for? OK, and here's my little odd thing. As soon as I get up and go into the bathroom, I look in the mirror, and I just go like this, arms up. I put that in a lot of pictures. I call it my live your life pose. And I'm like, I'm going to have a great day. And if there's some hiccups in the day, let me learn from these hiccups. I love yeah. that. I How's love that for a practice? That's a great that's practice. Fun. I like that. I like that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to. Just the physical of doing that. It feels, feels good. great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's similar to the move that they tell you too when you want to feel empowerment, right? You know, to just put your arms up as well. To almost do like the uh, 
what is it, Batman or Superman kind of pose. Um, so I do love that. And um, Gail, so th I think that there's a lot of study or a lot of um, information from a spiritual aspect in terms of gratitude, right? So wh why is it that gratitude, you know, I mean, with gratitude, I think you tend to attract more good things in your life. Is it because that's where we're putting the energy? Yeah, there's a lot with negativity bias, and I'm sure you've heard about this, where people will wake up and just focus, or all day long, focus on the negative. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not rich enough. I don't like my job. And they'll go on and on with what is just negative in their life, even about themselves. Someday I'm going to do this. I wrote a whole book. Where is it? It's someplace in my file here. All about your someday is now. Come on, get out there and live. Stop worrying about what you don't have. So when you wake up and just reframe that into your head of what you do have instead of focusing on negative, you know when you get a bad grade or a bad performance review mm -hmm. and you keep, you look at the negative. So you have all A's and you've got one B plus. All right. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at that and then you're, you're focusing on the B plus instead of, um, you know, all the A's. So we, we, we want to try to avoid negativity bias and really look at the positive in our life. It's a really short life. Listen to your heart and just tell the brain, come on now, let me focus on the good. Yeah, no, that, that is so true. And, and it's easy sometimes to let the brain or the mind get away. I mean, they say that the mind screams and the heart whispers, right? So it's so important to quiet that mind so you can really kind of get to your heart, to get to what you really want, to get to that point of appreciation and gratitude. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to mention, yes, you are um, an author and I, I know that that book is phenomenal because I've read it personally and I feel like it's changed my life. So um, tell us a little bit about what inspired you to write that book. Well, I'm gonna quiz you. What was on page 108? Oh, but, gosh. I'm, I can barely totally, remember I'm, this morning. I'm totally confusing you. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what's on page 108. Oh, okay. so, I actually wrote the book for our son, Samuel, and I like to say the word our because I used to say my all the time, and I didn't happen by myself, that's for sure. So I wrote the book back in 2014. It took me five years because I was working 80 hours a week, as you know, producing thousands of events. And... I would write it between innings at his baseball game or in the car driving up or Saturday morning. And I just, I worked on it for five years and I was gonna just print out one copy, but I ended up, um, I actually, I did self publish. I did not go through a publisher because I wanted the money to go to nonprofits 100%. So we've raised over $50,000 it's not available on Amazon yet. Maybe I'll put it on Amazon in 2025. But right now, it's a lot of corporate buys or individual buys through my website, gailspeaks.com. And it's for whoever, whoever like wants to read it. It's very, very positive. So if positivity annoys you. Don't pick it up. <laughs> and when you say your moment is now, what do you think is one of the biggest takeaways? I want to shake people and say, stop. Stop saying someday. Mm. Just stop. I want to actually say your someday is now. What in the world are you waiting for? You know, in the book, it goes through everything from time management to leadership to positivity. And what are we waiting for in life to live our life? Are we waiting for more time? Are we waiting to raise our children, for them to be out of the house, to, be, to retire and leave our jobs? We have to be happy now. We've got to be focusing on the good in our life now and living our now. Yeah, no, that's so, so true. Uh, you know, a lot of times, too, you know, um, I'm a financial planner. A lot of times, you know, we laugh because I think sometimes, you know, when we think about growing our families, you know, a lot of times men will say, well, I'm going to wait until the, the time is right or I have certain things. And it just, I don't think you ever truly arrive. So some of those things, you just have to have that leap of faith where you just move forward. So I, I agree with you there. Um, and it also reminds me, I have a good friend who um, gets very... <laughs> <laughs> she actually will make uh, fun of you if you talk about, if you say try, I'm going to try to do this. She laughs and says, well, then don't bother trying. It's rather weak, right? Um, so I think words are important. Words matter. How we talk to ourselves matter, right? Um, and along those lines, what are some positive things, you know, to put ourselves in that gratitude mindset that you would recommend? I think the number one thing you do, you could do, we could do it, I love to do, is look beyond yourself. 
I mean, in our family, I'm the oldest of four, we, and we grew up in Lebanon, Connecticut, out in the country. It was beautiful, just a, like really clean country, simple living, and more cows than people. <laughs> And a lot, we had a lot of spirituality. I, I'm not afraid to use the G word, the God word. You know, I teach at University of Rhode Island, and people can swear and say anything in the classroom. I don't think you're supposed to say God. I, say, I bring God into the classroom every day. Because, again, it's a sense of gratitude, whatever that is to you, spirit, whatever it is. So I believe that the biggest thing you can do to express your gratitude and to be a happier person is volunteer and help others. My mom had us at seven, volunteering. Um, we went to St. Joseph's School in Norwich, volunteering, selling all little items door to door, then the Girl Scout cookies. But the biggest, what would be the, probably, I don't want to say transition in my life, probably the biggest impact on my life was when I was 19 years old, my sophomore year at Tufts University, when my father had cancer and what he was given one year to live. He's 87 now, said that's been a very long year. Wow. But he started the Haitian Health Foundation based in Norwich, Connecticut, and Jeremy Haiti. And I was blessed that at 19 years old, I was able, I got to go to Haiti. Didn't have to, got to, wow. and volunteer. And I've been able to do that every single year, if not twice a year, since until COVID, until 2020. Now we're on a little bit, the, the clinic is running. We take care of 250,000 people a year, but I'm not physically going down there. And I'm not needed down there. I'm needed here to fundraise, raise money through selling my book, through um, speaking. But it's also just a, an awareness of what we really have when you work with the poorest of the poor. When you, and how humble you are with the beauty of people in developing countries, their beauty, their smile, their faith, just a goodness. It's, it's really humbling. So I've had, a, I've had a long time of volunteering in, again, in Haiti, and it's been a blessing in my life. So I, my biggest thing is you don't have to go to Haiti to volunteer. There's local right. soup kitchens. There's all different organiz charitable organizations. You can give your money if that's all you have right now. Give your time if you have that. The adage is time, talent, treasure. What do you have that you can give? Yeah. And, and there's also, right, like a lot, a lot to be said about giving. And yeah, I think you're right. I think every time I volunteer or do something, I always feel that I've gotten more than I've even given. It just feels so good to be doing something. It really does. It just livens your soul, I think. It's just wonderful. Um, and um, you, know, you do that. You do that just with your interactions with people. I know you're interviewing me, but I'm going to spin it back on you because I called you, I think, two months ago and said, listen, I've met some nice women. I think if you would come to Newport, have lunch with us, you'd be very beneficial. Now it's turning into, I can think, a full day workshop where you're going to come in and just teach people about letting go and emerging in a, very, in a very positive way. So you're a very, very strong, inspiring woman. That woman, that's for sure. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, that means the world, honestly, coming from you, because um, I think you inspire me. And I think you're always doing things um, which I, I love. I've always admired you. So I was thinking about it. We go back over 20 years, right? And you have not. It's a blink. It's a blink because I feel like I just met you. I know. I know. But you have not changed. You've had this energy for 20 years. And you talked about Haiti when I first met you. And you're still, 20 years later, really involved and really pushing forward with making a change and I, I really love that about you and um, tell us a little bit about your speaking I know you are a keynote speaker you've mm -hmm. um, presenting quite often tell me a little bit about one of your most impactful presentations and why you're not going to believe this one <laughs> <laughs> I said so I'm teasing you. The number one seller for the, I should sell her, the one, number one requested for the past, I'd say three years, is the power of positivity. And the tagline is get to versus have to. And then I have another one called reigniting your spark. And it's seven ways, you know, it's just seven ways to just reignite your spark in life, get psyched about life again. There's leadership, customer service, sales. I'm a big sales trainer. I love training in sales. The right kind of sales. Sales the give to gain sales, not the gain first. Um, just like give first and have all good will come from that. And I've been speaking and training since 1998. How old is I? 21 maybe? Hey, I, I think, think so. the 19 I was going to say, but yeah. <laughs> but it's been a long time. And then in 1999, I started teaching at the University of Rhode Island and that's all the curriculum that's on the stage at conferences or corporations. 
And I'm pretty active. I'm speaking a lot. And I'm very, again, that's what I call a blessing because when you get on that stage, you're responsible for the, the emotions you're evoking in other people, the thoughts. Not everyone's going to like you. I hope most do. But it's just about um, looking in the audience and say, who needs to hear what today? And, and go from there. And making it really interactive and fun. The presentations can be a 45-minute keynote or a day-and-a-half seminar. Yeah. Um, and, and I do recall um, being at one of your presentations. And I thought, you know, I remember looking around at the audience. Um, this is years ago, probably like maybe 18 years ago. Um, and thinking, wow, like nobody is like looking down or looking away or looking at their phone. Or I mean, you definitely capture um, people's attention. So um, I, I do think that i um, very grateful for having you on today. And um, tell us a little bit more, though. Let's get back to gratitude. So um, if you were going to inspire us with, you know, a, a new way to start our tomorrow, right? So we're going we're gonna to get out of bed. We're going to do the pose. We might journal as well. Um, anything that you suggest? So we start the day off right, but how do we keep that momentum throughout the day? Well, I'll tell you what happened. My sister Jennifer, who lives in Waterford, she's an orthodontist in Norwich. Oh. When she had her triplets 22 years ago today, 22 years yeah. ago today. So Happy birthday to that. Cassidy, yeah, Cassidy was three, and then the triplets arrived in this world, Madison, Sydney, and Paige. They're wonderful. And she said, Gail, you're only working out. You're only taking a walk three days a week. That's not enough, and I've got the triplets. I need to walk in the morning and just get out. We're going to walk every single day. So that started almost, so that's 22 years ago where I'd wake up early. I would do, I'd kind of like read a lot of different reflections and sit for 15 minutes by myself. And I can appreciate that there's some people, they're raising their kids, they don't have 15 minutes. So if you can anyway, just carve out some quiet time. Mm -hmm. Then, so but Jennifer and I started walking every day. We walked for 30 minutes and we've continued it to today. So um, to, to this morning, like we talk every single morning for a half hour. So my pattern is, up really early, you know, between 4.44 and 5, get to get on the phone with my sister at 5.30, go to the gym, um, 6 o'clock, work out. Yes, I do watch the news, but it's the one time I'm like, I watch four different channels to get different perspectives. <laughs> and then um, go back home, shower, go like this, and I'm going to have the best day. I also, when I first wake up, I lie there for a minute, really happy I'm here grateful I'm here, and I start thinking about things I'm grateful for, just things I'm grateful for, like just the fact that I have a bed and I'm in it. We have so many, I do a lot of work here with the Dr. Martin Luther King Center. I'm on the board, I've been on the board for 20 years, rolled on and off, Newport Hospital, a few other boards. And there's so much in this, in our own country, you know, with homelessness and hunger and food insecurity. Um, a lot of mental um, anxiety with the kids right now. I feel like that's the biggest thing I'm seeing in the classroom. So if I can do my little part every day, whether it's in the classroom or on a stage or being happy and pleasant in the office or smiling at the barista in the morning and just being kind, we're making a difference. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, you know, it reminds me of um, one of my, my middle daughter. She says that COVID helped her change. She just said she woke up one morning and she just said, I'm going to focus on gratitude. And she started journaling and she's really pretty much changed her life. She changed her look. She changed, you know, her style. She changed her, her interaction with people. I, I thought she did a really great job. Um, and it was funny, I think a couple of weeks ago, I, I was like texting her and I'm like, why aren't you responding? <laughs> so she responded a little bit later and said, oh, I don't pick up my phone anymore first thing in the morning. It's my time to journal and, and read something positive and fill myself with something positive. So I'm thinking, wow, the student becomes the teacher, right? Like she's really reminding me of the importance of that, right? Because sometimes I wake up and I do look at the phone right away. And it does, no. you know, then you're giving up your control, right? I think you're right. I think if you can lay in bed for a little bit and have your stillness and think about the things that you're grateful for. Think about, and they say, right, the more that you focus on what you're grateful for, the more you'll attract that, right? You'll have more of it or you'll appreciate more of it. Um, I brought it up, I think, at another show, but I think Dr. Wayne Dwyer 
has a famous quote where he talks about, you know, if you look for opportunities, you will find them. If you look for obstacles, you will find them. I just, and I repeat that, but I, really, it helps me refocus a lot, you know, when I'm having a tough day, when things aren't working out, um, because it is how we shift our thinking. And I think gratitude is something that, um, is something that can really, really not only change our lives, right, because we help ourselves, but we really can change the lives of so many around us. I love that your daughter, at such a young age, just decided that she was going to be grateful. That something spurred that. What a beautiful soul. And oh. Dr. Wayne Dyer, my sister Jen and I, and I have my sister Marilyn too, I better give, she's the executive director of Haitian Health Foundation, give her a letter, little credit here. <laughs> but my, um, Jennifer, we had a Dr. Wayne Dyer quote up on the mirror that said, I'm not going to let anyone or anything ruin my day today. I'm not going to let anyone or anything ruin my day today. What a great way to start the day. And then Jennifer amplifies that by saying, spray Pam on yourself. But don't really spray Pam. I'm like, really spray Pam on myself? She's like, no, then everything just falls off. Oh, I like that. I like that. And I have to just mention, I just, just only because we, you know, we grew up in the area. I also have my brother Mark. My, bar, my brother Mark now is a, how would I say it? He was an OBGYN, and about ten years ago, he started um, um, it, like successful aging and sexual wellness. And he has a clinic um, in Fall River. He goes between Fall River and um, Fort Lauderdale, you know, just with you know helping women as we get older. Um, so that's, I think, a very positive thing in life, too. So that's what he's, his um, Instagram is, the real Dr. Feelgood, for anyone <laughs> interested. <laughs> I think uh, I promote him more than I promote myself. I like that. I like that. No, it is so but important. But it's positive. It's a positive thing. I, like, I have very positive siblings and extremely positive mom and dad. So well, that's what I was going to get to. I don't want to interrupt, but I mean, obviously, oh, your parents did something right. I mean, I had the privilege of meeting your sister not too long ago at a luncheon, a ladies' luncheon that we were at, and I thought she was just delightful. Um, and she I loved you. Oh, thank you. And I've heard about your brother now and your other sister. So what would you say, right, for those of us that are their parents, um, that are just trying to strive to be better in our lives, to, that we want to bring richness to others, good things? Well, I mean, what, what was the thing that your parents did that really resonated, you think, with you and, and perhaps your siblings? I think it, I know what it was. One was they were really tough growing up with us, like raising us, which is really good. I think being tough is good. And my mom would, if we complained about a pimple on our face, I remember she'd bring us to the Rose Hawthorne Cancer Home right outside of Fall River, Mass. And we would serve people who were losing their nose or had you know, cancer on their face. And she said, go clear their dishes, now go play cards. And we never complained again, but we fell in love with you know, volunteering and talking with these people and stopped looking behind the aesthetics of what we look like and what's in your heart. So my parents, again, it was inspiring that culture of volunteering. And life was so simple when I was growing up. I told the students yesterday in class, I think I'm a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I was <laughs> trying to figure out which, which dinosaur that I was. But I think that when you grow up, when you think about what you have, I mean, come on. At my age, I have my mother and father. Isn't that enough to be grateful for? Mm -hmm. That's enough. You know, it's just... It's just such a it's such a gift, and to have a job that I will literally come in here and kiss my desk, kiss my desk, and say thank you, thank you for a job. So many people are out of work or they're going to work miserable, but you can reframe that in your head too. You don't have to go to work miserable. You don't have to. You just again can do the arm movement and say I'm going to look for good things in this day. And if there's people at work driving you crazy, take a good look at yourself too. How are you reacting to that? Is there anything that you can do that could help that? You know, just help that. Is, is the problem you? Because I know in the past, there's been times the problem's been me. Yeah. I, I think, I think sometimes the problem, <laughs> it, it, yeah, the problem is you, or the problem is how you are letting it affect you, right? I always think, too, mm -hmm. that um, just because somebody's maybe not handling themselves in, in the best manner, you don't have to put yourself in that situation or, at, you know, at that level, you could still, you know, handle yourself the way you want to, right? We don't have to take on somebody else's negativity, which is easier said, right, than, than done. But I think it is important to remember that, you know, we do have more control than we think, right? It's just about reframing. And again, be, it all comes down to, I think, right, being grateful and um, looking at the positivity. Absolutely.
Yeah. But um, my mom said that I came right out of the womb with a big smile on my face and joyful. <laughs> so. I, I would not be even a little bit surprised. I'm sure you did. I know babies cry. You probably came out giggling. I mean, you are the, <laughs> yeah. the moment of the most positive. It stems from gratitude. It really does. And no life is perfect. I don't want to even say mine's close to perfect. But again, it's focusing on what we have. And when you really just start looking, at this point, I always tell people I'm on my back nine in golf, but I don't golf, but I'm, I'm on my back nine, but I think I'm really on my back three. And I'm approaching that 19th hole of just <laughs> sitting, relaxing, enjoying. And I just love working and being around people and being around the students. And it's their turn now. I've kind of arrived. I'm where I'm going to be. And I'm happy with where I am. Right. It's, there's an expression, and I think this is important. Um, it's called your icky guy. Are you familiar with oh, this? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. So I-K-I-G-A-I. And I tell um, audiences, it's not the boy that, or girl that chased you around with a frog in second grade. Your icky guy, it's the confluence of what you love, what you do well, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. Ikigai is your purpose. It's what the French call your raison d'être. And I feel like I've reached my ikigai. Wow. I feel like I've reached it. Like I'm living my purpose, the what? teaching, the speaking, and, um, you know, in sales as well. I couldn't have asked for a better way for you to wrap it up. I mean, I, that was absolutely perfect. So, Gail, you're an inspiration, you are an author, you're a keynote speaker, you are a professor, you are a mother, you're a wife, and um, you are a fabulous daughter and sister. So, so wonderful to have you with us today. Thank you so much for sharing about the richness of gratitude, and I hope to have you on again sometime soon. I'm coming, I'm driving down in purpose, uh, I'm uh, in person. <laughs> Okay, I would like to see. I'm driving down in purpose, in person. <laughs> Everything that you do has a purpose. I'm not surprised you said that. You are very mindful. So thank you so much again thank for being you. here. Thank oh. you for having me. Take care.